So if you guys saw that video right there, you, you might have noticed one thing, that one third of that video was showing your schools. And um, one of the biggest things that we aim to do with MHACs is to give away as much ownership as possible because we want a bunch of people to feel like MHACs is theirs. And so what I'm gonna be talking about right now is how we've scaled up our local organizer model pretty much, which isn't anything formal, but, um, but stand up if you've organized an MHACs bus. Has anyone here organized an MHACs bus? Give a hand for these guys right here, you guys. So we're gonna be talking about bus economics because with MHACs, we went all in on buses. Um, the first MHACs, we went all in on buses. The second one, we did some flights. Um, the third one, we did a little bit of flights, but we, we had 27 buses. So we, we went all in on buses. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about uh, why this is a good move and how you can do it for your own hackathon. Here's uh, some numbers right here. Uh, most of the charter buses that we book, um, they can fit 55 people, right? And most of them cost between $3,000 and $4,000, so you can do the math right there. That's about $50 to $75 a person. That's a lot cheaper than giving people $200 travel subsidies. Um, so as far as bringing your budget down, uh, which is something that we had to do from MHAX 2 to MHAX 3, um, this is a really, really good move. Um, also, buses are really cool. They, they kind of suck, but because everyone's going through this like really long, you know, 10 to 12 hour drive, they get to bond. Look at that, that's Maryland, you guys. Like they're all having such a good time on that bus, like not having a good time together. How awesome, yeah. So, um, so we really think uh, the buses are really, really huge for building a community at the schools that you're, uh, that you're gonna be bringing to your hackathon. By the time that people get to the hackathon, like they all know each other. They've all you know, been in really, really close quarters for a while. Some of the buses come from you know, 13 hours away. Some of the buses break down along the way, um, but, they, but they all get to know each other and that's really, really cool. So that's a little added benefit. Um, and, and one of the biggest things that, that kind of powers this whole bus model, um, it, it would be really hard to organize 27 buses centrally, right? So we kind of decentralize that. We, we go and find um, the hacker entrepreneurial leader at, at each of these schools that we wanna, that we wanna bring. Um, and, and we pretty much try to get them to, to take on the responsibility of, of, of doing the bus. And, and with that though, we get to give them like a little bit of power because they, they get to choose you know, how do we select who's gonna be on this bus? They get, they get a lot of that freedom. Um, and so, to get local organizers, one, you guys are already at HackCon, so you're in a really, really good place. You're meeting the people from other schools who are running their hackathons. Those are probably the right people to also be helping you with, uh, with this bus thing, um, because they probably know, you know, all the, all the hackers at their school. Um, additionally, Facebook is super powerful for uh, reaching out to the other hackathon leaders. There's uh, two groups in particular, the HackCon group for, uh, for this event right here, and then uh, the Hacker League, which is another group. They're both secret. Um, Facebook now doesn't let us make them closed, which would let you uh, ask for access. So, um, so to, to get invited to these groups, actually you can just uh, shoot me a message on Facebook. Uh, you can find my Facebook, bit.ly slash hell yeah, that's three L's. If you do four L's, that's fine. If you do five L's, that's fine. Um, that all links to my Facebook. So you can just shoot me a message and, uh, and I will, if, if you have a specific school that you need someone, uh, that you need an intro to, I know the organizers at like a bunch of schools and if I don't know them, I can find someone who does. Um, so definitely feel free to shoot me a message if, uh, and then also to get into HackCon and the Hacker League since they're secret, shoot me a message and I'll, and I'll let you into those groups if you guys are, are attending here. Um, but the best way to get local organizers on board, even better than, than going to bit.ly slash hell yeah, is um, to actually go to their events. Um, you guys can't really see actually because this thing's in the way and stuff, but there's like a bunch of orange right here and we're taking up like uh, a fourth of this auditorium. That's Michigan Hackers at Penn Apps, right? Um, we wore these like super bright orange shirts and we came like really, really heavy uh, the, first, the first few times that we uh, showed up there. Um, so the best way to find local organizers is to go to their hackathons to show support. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that you want to do. Um, and, and now I want to talk really quickly about the future of hackathon transportation. Um, we, we tried the subsidy thing, uh, it was expensive. HackMIT did $200 subsidies. PenApps, somehow, Nick does crazy fundraising magic to cover your flights in full, um, but I don't know how sustainable that is. So we're trying to bring down the cost of bringing, you know, 1,200 or, or 500 or whatever, whatever the amount of hackers is uh, that you wanna come from other schools to your hackathon. Um, 
And uh, as you can see, the, this is the problem. Alexei talked about it. Um, this is the number of 300 plus person uh, student hackathons, um, at least the ones that I'm aware of. In 2011, there weren't really any. 2012, we had you know, Hack and Y and PenApp started getting big. Um, 2013, uh, of, you know, like seven, eight, nine hackathons joined the game. In just spring of 2014, there's almost 20 300 plus person student hackathons. That's insane. And then it's just, I mean, that curve tells me it's gonna keep growing. So, you know, funding is gonna get tight and it is gonna become more and more so the bottleneck of a lot of the things that you wanna do with these hackathons. Um, so, so even more so than, than shifting to buses, I think something that we need to do, uh, the buses, you know, buses plus plus, like that's, uh, that's something we should do more of. Um, currently, hackathons cover transportation, but what I think is actually an interesting option um, is to convince attendees, to convince the organizers who are organizing you know, these buses for you, uh, to convince them to see if their school could somehow cover some of the tra transportation. Um, are the hack tech guys here? Are they in the room? How did you guys get here? Boom, okay, so this hack tech paid $2,000 for them to make it out here last, Caltech, Caltech. Um, hack tech couldn't, yeah, yeah, Caltech paid for that. So, uh, <laughs> So, and, and I think that, that this is something, like, schools are already doing this. They're already sending kids to events different places, and they're covering the transportation. You have to convince them that this is worth doing. Um, and, and at 50 to $75 per person, that's, that's a lot cheaper than $2,000 to send four guys over here, even, even though it's probably very, very good money spent on their part. Um, so... We need your help to get your schools on board. We need to figure out a way where a lot of the funding right now is coming from companies, but what I think would be really interesting and what I th a party that benefits a ton from these events is the schools that, that send hackers to these other events. They don't even have to host the event. They literally can just send a bus, put some kids on a bus, send them to a hackathon, and then those kids come back and they're super pumped. They're like, they, they can't eat, you can, when you, when you try to convince kids to build stuff and like learn how to code, like it's so difficult. So many schools are struggling with this. Send them to a hackathon and try to get them to stop building. Um, so let's get schools on board. Um, that's a big thing. Um, we'll probably talk about it more. We're gonna, Swift and I um, are gonna be working on it and, uh, and we're gonna try to figure out a way for you guys to reach out to your schools so we can get them on board and uh, really try to scale these hackathons up. Thank you guys.